The uh, what I do again though is advanced prep, or I'll try to make sure I've uh, brought things with me to help me with, like for instance, if you're going to do a cobbler, okay, you you need a cake mix. You want to bring a box of cake mix. How are you going to blend it? How are you going to, you know, eggs and all that kind of stuff, right? And so uh, you have a couple of choices. You can make the cake mix ahead of time at home, put it in a Ziploc bag, and bring it with you like that. And make sure it stays refrigerated because it will have the eggs in it. Okay? Uh, or you can do what I like to do because the kids enjoy it, and that is use a Ziploc method of making the cake. So you dump everything into a Ziploc bag, and you double the bag so in case there's any bursts, and you just assign a couple of kids to, to go to town on it, okay? And they'll knead the thing and they'll get it all mixed up inside the bag. You don't need a beater, you don't need anything, any kind of fork stirring it or anything. They can do all the work for you right there in a bag, okay? So I love Ziploc bags. They're fantastic to have. Uh, and, you know, you can reuse them. Take them home with you, wash them out. We, we reuse ours. I don't know if you guys do, but we do even at home. Uh, they're always nice to have on hand, and you don't have to, you know, throw it away as soon as you're finished using it. And I advise against throwing them in a fire to try and dispose of them. They are made of plastic, and even though it may look like it's gone, you're leaving the residue of the plastic there within the fire pit, uh, or wherever it is. And so that is not a, a leave-no-trace element. Um, I, did they talk much about uh, campfire selection and things like that? No, right. No. Okay. That's so we'll later. All right, who's doing the campfire stuff? Oh, you are. That's at the end. Oh, okay. No, no, are you talking about... Uh, are you cooking talking about methods or something? Not, not, yeah, cooking methods, using a campfire. You're going to talk about the actual campfire program and stuff, right? Okay, so yeah, that's, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. When it comes to um, cooking a campfire, I already told you guys, half of you, I guess, before, small fires are best. You don't need a huge fire. Um, cooking fires really do need to kind of be smaller. You you got a blazing fire, you're going to roast and barbecue and charcoal your food before it's even ready to eat. Um, and so you know you want to keep the fires small. Uh, and the um, <coughs> I'm trying to make sure I don't cover anything that she might talk about. Um, <coughs> <coughs> I mentioned to you guys before about. Uh, the kids roasting marshmallows on a fire. My judge of how big a fire should be is how closely you can approach it. If you can approach the fire comfortably without scarring or you know damaging your hand or skin, third degree burns within a second, uh, then then that's a good size fire. You don't want anything too large. Uh, you want the kids to be able to enjoy it. This is for the kids. It's not for us. Um, and taking away that opportunity to sit there and roast a marshmallow. You know, you are robbing the kids of the most enjoyable, enjoyable thing ever. So, now when it comes to Dutch ovens, uh, really quickly about this, we've talked about uh, how you line it, some things you can do to prepare for it. Cooking on a Dutch oven is it, very simple. Like for instance, a cake, you guys know how much, what temperature you need to... 350. Basically, yeah, it's always on the box, right? 350. Look at each coal as representing 25 degrees. Hmm. So you put as many coals on the bottom and on the top, m equaling up to 350 mm -hmm. degrees, okay? Mm -hmm. So that would basically be 12, 14 coals equaling 350 degrees. You see how I got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would put 14 coals on the bottom, 14 coals on the top, and that's what this lip is for, to hold the coals on. 14 coals on the top, no more. Okay? You may look at that and you go, that's not enough heat, and you're just so tempted to put more, because 14 doesn't look like it's really going to be that much, but it's going to be perfect, and it will cook at exactly the same amount of time as you need, and it will not burn the, uh, the, uh, the thing. Okay? So, I just want to make sure I have my, yeah, that, you put 14 on the top and the bottom? Yes, not just 14, 14 on the top, total. 14 on, no, no, no. So it would be a 28 total. 28 total. Yeah, so 14 on the bottom. 14 on the top, okay? Because heat's got to come from both sides. If you just have it on the bottom, the, the top's never going to get cooked. The, the thing about a Dutch oven is you're building up the heat inside the oven itself. It almost works like a convection oven in that way, okay? And so you have to have heat surrounding it. And that's what this lip is for, putting holes up at the top, 
and it's raised off of the coals here. You try not to let the coals touch. If you have to set it on the coals, that's fine. It's better if you just let the coals be on the bottom, you know. Obviously on the top, they're touching the metal, but the difference is, is the top, you're going to have a space in between the metal and the food. On the bottom, the food is right in contact with the metal. And so to keep it from burning, having that space there will help keep the, the bottom from burning. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So sorry for asking all these questions. Not a problem. That's what we're here for. So where do you get one of these Dutch ovens? I've never seen any of them. The, they've been around for oh, yeah, centuries. Oh, like yeah, I've heard of them, but I've... Yeah. Um, we use like a reflecting oven, so I never knew a Dutch oven was on a pot on stilts. You could, I, I actually it picked this one up at Costco. It does not have to be on stilts. I have a Sport Authority. It's in the oven. Can they go yeah, about 40 bucks. I actually do too. For, for Thanksgiving, I have a um, an, old, an, an oblong Dutch oven, and it's made of cast aluminum instead of cast iron. So you can have cast aluminum, cast iron, and this one's so old, it's got self, uh, what do you call that when you ma marinate a turkey? What is it called? Self-basting. It's got a self-basting feature inside. It's got ridges built all along the top oh, yeah. so that as the moisture hits the top and it hits one of the ridge, it won't drip, it won't go all the way to the edge and drip down. It'll drip all through the pan. Mm -hmm. And so as we use it every Thanksgiving for turkey and our turkey comes out like it was cooked in an emu. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Hawaii we say emu. It's also good to buy I'm Samoan, so at least my wife is. <laughs> so where would you recommend putting the Dutch oven? In a fire pit or a flat ground? You can do it anywhere. Uh, if you're, like for instance, in this case, we could do it in there if we had room. Um, it, you can do it. We we put in an oven. We have some, the older ones, the antique style don't have the, uh, the, the stilts. Our cast iron one is like old, old. And it doesn't have stilts, um, the legs. The old ones also don't have the lips along the top. And so we have one that's cast iron as well that uh, is just a flat. And those were used, you know, in fireplaces from way old. You know, they would hang them in the fireplace from a hook, you know. And so you've got a lot of varieties out there. Cast aluminum is really handy because it's going to be a lot lighter than a cast iron one would be. Um, the only problem with cast aluminum is if you get the fire too hot, you can crack it. Okay, uh, cast aluminum, you know, the, its heat limits aren't as much as cast iron. Okay. Another thing too is you don't use soap on that, do you? No, no. Do not make the mistake. It's just like your cast iron skillets. At home, we use nothing but cast iron skillets. Don't put your cast iron skillet in the dishwasher. Our daughters did that once and took all the seasoning off and we had to re-season the whole thing. Uh, the seasoning is carbon. It's a layer of carbon that builds up on the, uh, on the actual um, surface. And it, you notice the outside here doesn't have the carbon. And so this can rust, but inside you'll see no rust because of that carbon layer. And the carbon is a non-stick surface. It's really fantastic. So while you guys are doing your thing, I'm going to go ahead and put together a Dutch oven. We'll have some cobbler here towards the end of your course. Um, and it'll be a little cherry cobbler that we'll do. Okay? So go ahead and we'll turn the yeah. time back over.